This is the Edexcel Unit 2 Modular Maths paper. This is a sample paper, and I'm just going to go through and look at some of the key words and bits of information on the paper. Now, first of all, we can see that it says the time allowed is 1 hour and 15 minutes. And if I scroll down, it tells us that there are 60 marks in the paper. So a good target to aim for is to be able to do a mark a minute. So the paper is an hour and 15 minutes, that's 75 minutes. So if you can do a mark a minute for most of the paper, then that means you've got some spare time at the end for checking your answers and working on the, the questions that you're finding more tricky. Now, it says here, questions labelled with an asterisk are the ones where the quality of your written communication will be assessed. So there you've got to make it absolutely clear that you're showing all your working and that you're explaining what you're doing as you go along with headings and sentences, etc. So let's look at a few terms. So, uh, oh, of course, there's the formula page here, and you have two pieces of information which may be used in the exam, and it may not be used in the exam, but it's good to be aware that these things are there. So the first of them is the area of a trapezium. So if you see a question on trapezium, look back at this. And the second one is volume of a prism. There's a picture of one there. Uh, so again, if you have a question about volume of a prism, make sure you look back there to check how to do it. Okay. On to question one. Now, let me just go up a little bit. So there are three parts to this question, and each part is worth only one mark. Now, if it's one mark, you can just write down the answer. You don't have to show working. So for this question, all I have to do is, for the first part, I decide which program lasts for 10 minutes, and I write down the name of the program. Uh, number two. It says simplify uh, y plus y plus y plus y plus y, and that's one mark, so I can just write down the answer. This one, this is a two-mark question. It's always good to show you're working if you're not sure of the two-mark question. But this is two marks because they're hoping you're going to gather the x's together. So that would be three x's. And then look at the numbers. I've got 5 and minus 7, so that would be minus 2. So I get one mark for writing 3x and one mark for writing minus 2. Question 3. Part B says at the bottom here, you must show your working. Now this is really, really important. It's two marks. Now, you may be able to just work out the answer and write down the answer, but if you do that, you will get no marks. Uh, if it says you must show your working, you will get nothing unless you show your working. So even if the working was something as simple as 2 add 3, you have to write 2 add 3 and then on the answer line put 5. So don't ignore that sentence. It's really important. Lots of people throw away marks for not showing their working. Okay, moving on. Here we've got a question. And again, it says you must show your working down the bottom. Uh, so we're going to show our working for this. Now this is an asterisk question. So that's one of the ones where we have to uh, show all our working and explain what we're doing. This is where you get marked on the quality of your explanation as well as the maths. And this is worth four marks. So it's worth getting this one right. So for this question, we've got to work out what, uh, which packets Tommy should buy to, to leave him with the most change from £10. So we're, fi we're trying to find what's the cheapest way of buying 200 or more bags. So we might decide to buy five boxes of 40 bags. Now I would show that by, by writing a title, five times 40 bags, and then show the maths working in the answer. I could do it also by buying three boxes of 80 bags. So I might write uh, three boxes of 80, and then show the maths calculation. I could buy two boxes of 160 bags. So I'd do the same again. You may have spotted that I could buy two 80 bags, that's 160, and then add a 40 bag, and that would be 200. So I might put that as a title. And once I've worked out which is going to be the cheapest, then I still haven't got all the marks, because I must say, so I've got to work out which is the cheapest, and then I have to, set to show the working that will tell me what change Tommy's going to get from £10. 
And then to finish with, with all these questions, a good thing to do is always finish it with a sentence. So even if you've shown your maths that, for example, a 160 bag box and a 40 bag box would be the cheapest, and that's shown in your working, at the end, write as a sentence, the cheapest option for Tommy is to buy a box of 160 bags and a box of 40 bags, and his change from £10 would be, so that it's very clear for the examiner. Now you'll find that there are a few more of those questions as you go through the paper. Now we're back to question five, you've got some one mark questions. So again, these are ones where you can just write down your answers. Uh, question seven, we have a question there to do with symmetry. And in part B, it says which of these shapes has rotational symmetry? Now you're allowed in the exam to have tracing paper. And if you have a question like this and you think it would be useful to have tracing paper, then put your hand up, wait for the invigilator to come over, and then tell them that you want a piece of tracing paper and they will give one to you. A piece of tracing paper is going to be very helpful for questions like this, particularly question B, where I might look at shape C and decide that that does have rotational symmetry. Because I haven't noticed that the vertical line going up and the vertical line going down they're not the same length, so it's not going to be uh, symmetrical in that way. So you use tracing paper and that will show you nice and easy, so don't always remember that you can ask for tracing paper. We're looking at question 8 now, uh, where they're asking you to draw a graph uh, of y equals 5x plus 1, from x equals minus 1 to x equals 3. Now with a question like this, this is the sort of question where if you know what you're doing, you might be able to just draw the line straight away. But you should always write a table showing the x and y values. And always do at least three, but preferably four or five. And then, uh, so you've got space underneath to do uh, your table. Then plot the points with an x to show that you've plotted them, and then draw through them with a ruler. If you've got one of your points wrong, you'll spot that because it doesn't make a straight line. But with a question like that, always show your working by showing a table. Skip ahead to question 10 now, which is to do with annual fees at a local golf club. And there's a lot of information in there, so it's worth reading through every sentence very carefully. And a basic rule of thumb is, if there are numbers in the sentence, then they're there for a reason, you're probably going to need them, or almost certainly going to need them. So this tells us the club needs to raise £7,200. And uh, one person, the club captain, suggests increasing the members' fees by 5%. And the president says that each member should pay an extra £18. So they're two different things. And then it says, which is the better suggestion you must show while you're working? This is an asterisk question, so I must show my working clearly. So I may want to put in headings. So I could put in, as a, as a first heading, uh, captain's suggestion. And then work out, showing my working, what a 5% increase would mean for full members, then for weekday members, etc. And then a new heading, President's Suggestion, and showing how much he's suggesting it would be for full members, weekday members, etc. And then uh, I've got my number of members, so I could work out how much money that's going to bring in, and then I could compare it to the current year, and then see what the difference is. And then we should find that one of the figures is bigger than the other. Now that's that's going to be the suggestion they're going to want to take, the one that raises at least £7,200. Uh, and I'm going to finish that sentence by saying that uh, either it's the captain's or the president's suggestion, but let's say it's the captain's suggestion. I'd write a sentence saying that the captain's suggestion would raise so many pounds, this is the better uh, option for the club. So always finish these questions with a sentence, always put in headings, and if it's helpful, write in full sentences as well. I'm looking at question 11 now. This is an indices question. Now some of you will be able to do this in your heads for, uh, straight away. You'll decide that P is 2 to the power of 7 and Q is 2 to the power of 5. So P divided by Q is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. And I could just write on the answer line 4. But I will get nothing, because that could just be a guess. It says you must show your working. So I'm going to show every step of my working, and then I'm going to get both those marks. 
question 12 now, it's got an asterisk, it's another one of these questions where you have to show all your working, putting in headings, putting it in explanation, finishing off with a, a nice clear sentence at the end saying which conclusion is best. Now I'm looking at question 15, that's got a star as well, so again I'm going to explain this as clearly as I can. And at the end of the question it says, prove that angle QTU equals 2x minus 20 degrees. Now prove, that means you've got to explain fully why something is the case. So we want to prove that angle QTU equals that. So a first step may be to explain any other angles that you can find in, in that shape. So using the things you know about angles in uh, shapes with parallel lines, angles in triangles, and the fact that that's an isosceles triangle because it's got those little dashes on the lines. And use all those facts to help us fill in the angles. And then you should find that uh, QTU, angle QTU equals 2x minus 20. So you know what you're heading for. You know what you've got to get, but you've got to explain it in uh, each step. So the easiest thing to do would be just to draw on, the, on there and write in the angles. But as well as doing that, you should write a sentence each time you do it and explain why. So for example, the angle TQP, well I can see there that I've got two parallel lines going from P to Q and S to T, and an angle of 100 degrees at the bottom, and I know uh, that those are supplementary angles that add up to 180, so I could say angle TQP equals 80 degrees because, and then write a few words to explain why. And then I find any other angles I can find. And eventually I will find that Q to U is 2x minus 20. Now these asterisk questions are the, the trickier questions because they don't tell you exactly what you need to do. So you need to decide how to approach these questions. Now in your lessons your teachers will give you uh, practice at answering these sorts of questions. Um, but as you go through them, even if you don't know what the end result is going to be, you may still pick up marks by thinking, well, I don't know how to prove that angle Q to U equals that, but I do know some facts about angles, so I'm going to write about those and show in those angles. So always do your best to show anything that you, you can that's to do with the question, any calculations, explaining them clearly, and hopefully you'll arrive at the right answer or the final conclusion. But even if you don't, show as much working and explanation as you can, because you will pick up some of the marks. And always remember to finish with a sentence explaining why, wherever that's possible. So I think the key points when you're reading these exam papers is to read the sentences carefully. If there's numbers in there, they're there for a reason. If it says show your working, then you must show your working or you will get no marks. If it's an asterisk question, make sure you show headings, use lots of explanation and finish with a conclusion at the end. One last point is to make sure that you've got all the equipment you need with you in the exam. So you need a black pen, uh, a pencil, a ruler, a protractor, compasses, and if, uh, this is a non-calculator paper so you don't need your calculator, but make sure you've got all the other things with you and that they work and that you're ready to do them. Uh, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, I'm going to finish with a math joke. What do you call a tractor when it goes professional? A protractor. Thank you.